This was the only time I've ever been excited to go to class. I'm a senior in high school getting ready for graduation, currently battling the constant dread for my looming finals. Even art class, which was supposed to just pad my schedule, had an exam detailing irrelevant historical dates and the long names of foreign painters. Luckily, one of the idiots who skipped out on senior ditch day managed to drunkenly ram his car into a tree. He was dead on impact, and our art teacher, Miss Fleming, was convinced we were all distraught about it. Even though the world is better off without someone who would get behind the wheel drunk, she actually canceled the test to give us a fun project instead, drawing the scariest thing we can imagine. Better yet, the winner was going to get a $50 gift card as a prize. What you drawing? My little sister Casey asked. Something scary, I told her. Don't look or you're going to have nightmares. I like nightmares. I love scary, she squealed, trying to push me aside to see. I pushed back, but then she reached under my arm and crinkled the paper as she pulled, leaving a great ugly smudge of graphite all down the left side. God, she was obnoxious. Anyway, after that, I spent the rest of the evening locked in my room with my colored pencils. But a dozen sketches quickly turned into dozens of crumpled papers. I love all things horror, but it was harder than I expected. Coming up with something legitimately terrifying. Zombies? Lame. Ghosts and demons? I bet everyone was going to do that. I could take a humorous angle and draw something like student loans, but while it might be a laugh from the class, I don't think it would win. Besides, I always prided myself on my twisted mind, so I wasn't going to back down from this challenge. It was past 2am when I started getting really frustrated. After laughing through countless horror movies, reading diverse stories, and casually browsing through grotesque images online, I couldn't think of anything left that could scare me. Maybe I'd seen every dark thought the human mind could conjure. Maybe I was so desensitized to fear that everything seemed boring now. The whole appeal of horror to me is that there's always some new, unknown terror which stretches the limit of my imagination. It's why the darkness has held such fascination over us. Since the day man rubbed two sticks together to make fire, it's not the monster that scares us. It's the infinite potential of what the monster might be. Well now, it felt like actually putting my thoughts on the paper was the same as turning on the lights. And no matter how scary my idea might be, it will never be as frightening as when it couldn't be seen. Finally, I decided that if I couldn't draw anything properly scary, then none of those other white bread sissies could do it either. I just scribbled out a skull face pressing up against the paper, looking as though it was trying to escape. It broke the fourth wall just enough to get inside the viewer's head, and I was actually pretty proud of it by the time I finished. My anticipation grew the whole day, and by the time art came in the afternoon, I couldn't wait to show off my creation. All of the drawings were going to be anonymously shuffled into a pile, and then we'd secretly vote on the best. Can't vote for your own, most votes wins. Miss Fleming was zealous about keeping it fair, and even insisted that the whole stack of drawings be passed from person to person instead of hanging them all up, just in case our classmates' reactions influenced our vote. Game on. I caught a glimpse of a few of the drawings as they were shuffled face down into the stack. I saw a snake rearing to strike. Seriously? and a dizzying perspective from a guy looking down from the edge of a skyscraper. 
Did these people have no imagination? What's so scary about regular life stuff? We watched as the stack of drawings were given to Lily. She flipped slowly through them, and we gave off a collective moan as she agonizingly deliberated between two papers. Then she flipped to the last one in the stack, and the whole class started snickering. She was actually turning white before our eyes. Her eyes bulged and quivered, and her mouth worked through the motion of soundless words. I think we have a winner, someone cheered. Could it have been mine? I didn't think any picture could produce a reaction like that. Lily had always been a sensitive, whiny girl though. Even so, when she started clutching at her throat, we knew something wasn't right. She dropped the pile of papers face down on her desk, now using both hands to claw at her neck as though invisible hands were choking her. Is she having a seizure? Someone call the nurse. It happened too fast for anyone to react. Lily's neck strained so hard that all the individual tendons stood out like ropes bulging under the skin. Miss Fleming rushed to catch her. Too slow, Lily had already toppled out of her chair to sprawl face first on the carpet. 911, hello? Miss Fleming rolled Lily onto her back while holding her cell phone with her shoulder. The class clustered around staring in abject disbelief. No, her heart isn't beating. What do I do? Miss Fleming asked desperately. She dropped the phone and began heart compressions. Nate, a big round boy, scrambled on the ground for the phone and pressed it to his ear. No, no, I don't know. He was saying to the police, it was like a heart attack. Hey, look at this. It was the quiet Native American kid. Don't know his name. He was holding the stack of papers that Lily had dropped. Don't touch that. Nobody look at them. Miss Fleming demanded between compressions. Come on, Lily. Hang in there with me. Help is on the way. I'm not looking, okay? The Native American kid held the paper face down. But count them, there are 14 papers here. So what, the class has... Miss Fleming began, but she already realized her mistake. There were 14 kids in the class, yeah. If you count the idiot who hit the tree last week, there's no way he turned one in. It doesn't matter, Miss Fleming snapped. A hoat. Ah, that was his name. Go get the principal. Let's just focus on Lily right now, okay? Ahot looked down at the papers, then out the door, then back at the... Ahot, don't! He turned over the stack and skipped straight to the end. His brown skin immediately began to pale to ash. He gave a wild look around at the class, and then his hands were at his throat. Before anyone could do anything, he had already flopped straight onto the ground. Everything was a blur after that. Someone pulled the fire alarm to get everyone out, and the paramedics had to shoulder their way through the tide of bewildered faces and speculative chatter heading the other way. They returned with two stretchers and two lumpy white shapes. The way their faces were covered with the sheets reminded me of my own drawing with the skull pressed up against the paper. People were shouting and rumors were flying up and down the lines, and it took a long while until everyone was quiet in the parking lot. With all the confusion, nobody noticed me take the stack of drawings with me. After that, Miss Fleming had given the body so much attention that she seemed to completely forget about the cause of death. The general consensus was that the teacher had taken the drawings, but I kept them hidden under my jacket and didn't say a word. I just clenched the papers against my side and listened to the mounting whispers around me. 
heart failure caused by massive adrenaline surges. That's what people are saying. Those two kids were literally scared to death. School was canceled for the rest of the day. And I'm now back in my bedroom with 14 face down pieces of paper. I tried holding them up to the light to see if I could get a glimpse of what was on the other side. But it wasn't distinct enough to tell which one was which. So far, I've resisted the urge to look. I know every horror trope about the guy who lets curiosity get the best of him, but I can't help but feel that I'm not as fragile as they are. I've been exposed to everything. My heart doesn't even race at jump scares. Even if it's just for a second, I won't be able to live with myself knowing there is more out there than I was able to face. I know I'm obsessing, but my imagination is tearing me apart, trying to figure out what's there. If it was somehow from the kid that died, then it has to be something that he alone knows about. That means it's something to do with what happens to us after we die. My best guess is he brought back some twisted torture or hellscape so demented, so intrinsically woven with the core of our biology, that our very nature revolts against it. The forbidden fruit really is the sweetest. I tossed and turned the whole night trying to imagine what could be on that paper. I must not have fallen asleep until it was late, because it was almost noon when I woke up. Damn, didn't I have a test today? Surely the teachers will understand after yesterday. Yesterday, the bodies, the drawings, and now I was obsessing again. Did you win? Suddenly, I was awake. It was Casey sitting at the foot of my bed, the stack of papers in her hand. Casey, listen to me. I spoke as slowly as I dared, like I was trying to talk down a lion who was preparing to pounce. I want you to put those down. I need you not to look. Okay. I let out more air than I knew my lungs could hold. Then she grinned, flipping the stack over anyway. Casey, drop it like your life depends on it. Okay. She kept flipping. God, she was obnoxious. I dove at her to snatch at them, but she had already hopped off the bed just out of my reach. She was flipping faster now, four to go, now three. Casey, please, I'm not mad, okay? I'm begging you. Okay, flip. Two more before the final drawing. Which one is yours, she asked. It doesn't matter, let go of them. I leapt again. She tossed the papers in the air and I scrambled to catch them. I already crumpled five up before I realized. Casey was still holding on to the last paper. Her eyes were so wide. Her mouth hung open. I ripped the paper from her hand, but it only took a second with the other kids. Casey. Poor Casey. But then, she smiled. How about my drawing? Did anyone like that? The paper was face down in my hand. I didn't dare to look. Instead, I scanned through the rest of the drawings on the floor. All regular fears and boring monsters. There was no doubt that this was the mysterious paper. You didn't draw this. I said it with accusation. I was actually offended by the thought. Did too, Casey said. It's of the nightmare I have. But what is it? What's it look like? See for yourself. I wanted to. I wanted to so damn bad. My hands were starting to turn it over by themselves. She leaned in close to me so we could look at it together. Can I tell you a secret though? She whispered. My heart was beating so fast. Was this how they felt right as the adrenaline flooded their veins? right before they died. 
Go ahead, I said. I don't really like the nightmares. They just tell me to say that I do. They told me if I don't let them out, then they're going to take me inside. That's why I have to keep drawing them. Keep drawing? My hand came to a trembling stop. How many of these have you drawn? Dozens. Casey's whispers were hurried now, like she had to tell me before someone stopped her. But the more I draw, the more they want me to draw. And if I don't, they get so loud that I... Shh. It's okay, I said. I'm going to look at it now, and I'm going to figure out what's going on. Are you ready? Ready, she said. I turned over the paper, and she buried her face into my shoulder. I'm going to miss you. I barely made out the muffled words as I looked down into her drawing. I could feel my eyes stretching wider than they've ever been. I tried to speak, but my rib cage felt like it was closing in around my heart, and I couldn't breathe. My hands instinctively went to my throat. But no, that wouldn't help. That's how the others died, but not me. It was how I came to life. They said you passed their first test, Casey whispered. How do you feel? I shook my head, barely registering what she said. I couldn't take my eyes off the paper. I could feel my heart still straining inside me, but it was starting to slow. I forced myself to breathe, the motion feeling so unnatural and invasive, almost as though I traveled to another world and was flooding my lungs with a cold, stinging alien gas. It's beautiful, I replied. She bobbed up and down with excitement. Thanks, she said. They were afraid no one here would understand. Fear makes you feel alive, and feeling alive is beautiful. What's going to happen now? They're going to come visit you, and you're going to get another test. I'm still waiting for the next test too. Until then, We've got to just keep sending out the drawings. We've got to find other people like us, who love to be afraid. Because when the final battle happens, they're going to need us, just like we need each other now. So, that's why I'm recording this. You are the community that has taught me to love fear. So I'm going to extend my offer back to you. When you're ready to be tested, I will send you the drawing. Those who pass will be welcomed, and those who fail, well, they were right to be afraid.